Flat plan in general has two main sections to, to, to learn about. One is flat plan is the name of the chapter and zero is a special page meaning it shows you the active flat plan. So active flat plan versus stored flat plan. To get to the stored flat plan, you guessed it, you turn the inner knob to the right and this is the first place where a flat plan could be stored. It would be called flat plan number one. Keep turning, you got flat plan number two, number three, number four, number five, and I'm reading from this line right here. However, as you can see, none of these flat plan slots are filled. I do believe it goes up to 25 and then start cycling back. Yep, as high as 25 flat plans. All right, so he here we are, uh, flat zero. Now we can modify this flight plan and use it. However, if we turn the GPS off, all of this work is lost. So you can actually go to flight plan one or the first one that does not have any entries and create your flight plan, right? Now, in this case, I know we don't have Leesburg and Winchester and Martinsburg, but I'm going to put those identifiers in. Although it's going to say I can't find them, that's fine, just for the practice of it. Here I am looking at the GPS. Imagine yourself in the cockpit, and you're about to start creating uh, flight plan one. If I click the cursor, notice I can go up with the outer knob, and I do have the option, if there is anything in flat plan zero, I can copy it and start from there. I simply hit enter, and it copies it for me. Notice I'm still on flat plan one, but now I have entries in there. Assume I don't want all the entries. I go to the cursor, use the outer ring, come down, and say, no, that's not where I want to go. Click the clear button, it says delete that entry, you say enter, and there it goes. And in our case, I'm going to delete this one also, start fresh, delete that one, yes. So I'm going to start typing, okay, and this is Kilo, Juliet, Yankee, Oscar, and most of us would recognize this as Leesburg our home base. Once I'm done, I can hit enter and the aircraft is going to list it's going to list the actual name of the airport Leesburg Airport, Virginia and you would say enter to accept that. In the simulator Leesburg database info is not available. So I'm going to say, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's the uh, way important that I created in the past. So say enter, and there's KJO. Let's say I want to fly from KJYO via JSON. So now I'm done with the first point. That's my origination point. And now I want to put in, I'm going to Winchester, but I want to go to Winchester via JSON intersection. If I turn this knob to the right, the first letter always K, so I simply, while I still over that K letter, I turn the knob to the left, and there's J, then I turn the knob, outer knob to the right, and I have the A, so I don't do anything, I move on with and in the cra airplane, in the aircraft, when I hit enter, it should show me JSON information, but in the simulator there is no JSON, so I'm just going to simulate saying, yeah, and just take it from the present position and hit enter, and that's JSON, and there's JSON listed, 
Then I can go on and enter with the inner knob to the right. First letter is K. And I'm going to go KOKV. Now, that is the identifier of the airport I'm going to. I click enter and I have made a waypoint from it before but in the aircraft I can't emphasize it enough you will see the name of the airport which is Winchester Virginia once you see that and you're comfortable that is the airport you're flying to hit enter and now I have a flight plan notice the cursor is still flashing asking me to enter more points and notice that I have 4, 3, 2, and 1 is gone. Of course, I know you know that 1 is actually above. Right there is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, if I enter just randomly to illustrate an example, let's say I added another one. Here's what you really should see, the name of the airport and the aircraft, you'll have that. In the simulator, you may or may not have that. But here it is, the name of the airport in Wisconsin, and say so you enter. The point I was trying to illustrate is if I go back to the top of the flight plan, notice I have one, two, four. What gives? Well, because of the limitations on the number of lines, the GPS whatever, however many waypoints you have, always lists the last waypoint, a clear indication to you that there are more uh, than just three lines. There are as many as whatever the bottom line is. So this could be five, could be 10, whatever your flat plan looks like. And to test that, you basically have the cursor flashing like I have here. If it's not, you click cursor and you go down. That's one, two, three, four, and here we are, that's, that's all we have. In your flight plan, you can actually turn this field into something else. Remember, all fields that have a greater than sign uh, could display different values. What happens here is, if I say, okay, I'm satisfied, and I just simply scroll up, Remember, when you get done with your flow plan, you need to scroll up until Use Inverted is highlighted. If I hit Enter, then it's going to reverse the order and puts it in the Active Fly Plan. But I simply want to use it without reversing the order. So I click to the left with the right button, right um, knob one more time. And now Use is highlighted only and Inverted is not highlighted. In this case, I can simply hit enter and notice cursor will be gone, enter will be gone, and you'll have flat plan zero. Here we go. Click enter. All right, so it copied that flat plan and put it in place for me where it is now the active flat plan. And what this little arrow says that is going directly to Jason in the airplane you'll see a connected line from a waypoint, in this case could be KJYO, and a line turn and then end up with an arrow like this to the next waypoint, in essence saying we're going from KJYO to JSON. Now, if we look at this some more, we can modify this on the fly by hitting the cursor again. And now we have the same functionality that we had previously, except of use and use inverted, because you're already on um, flight plan number zero. So I can actually, if I want to add a new entry, I will have the cursor flashing, and if not, I will click cursor, and there it is flashing. I can use the outer ring to come down to KO, KV. And let's say I want to add CLAD. C-L-A-D-D, -D, which is one of the waypoints uh, from Jason to Winchester. I highlight Winchester, which is the waypoint that I want to insert before, and simply start turning the inside, the inner uh, 
dial and start getting the letters that I want. In this case, I'm looking for C because it's an intersection, not an airport. Here's C, outer knob to the right, and you're off. Now I have in my active flight plan, flight zero, a flight plan that I can review by going up and down. So I'm going from KJYO to Jason to CLAD to remember this one we added on the fly and in this case we don't need it. So let's use clear to delete it. GPS asks, do you want to delete this? I would say yes by clicking on the enter button and there it goes. So in essence what we've done is we modified our active flight plan after we had saved it in number one. If I turn the cursor off and go to the original plans we started from, which is number one, you'll see that's different, right? However, to capture active flight plan, I go from flight plan one, turn the knob to the right, flight plan two, that has nothing in it. Now I have the option to copy. I will turn my cursor on and go up with the outer radio. Okay. It says copy from flight plan zero. That's what I want. And I hit enter. And there it is. Now I've copied it. It is on flight plan two. It's not the active one, although it sounds and has all the waypoints as the active one. But if I change this, I don't change the active one, I change number two only. So it's best when you get done with that, use the inner knob and go back to page number zero, which is flight, active flight. Now, as I mentioned, in flight, you'll have a connected line from KGYO to JSON or from JSON to CLAD telling you that's the leg that the aircraft is flying at this point. If you see a symbol like this, this tells you that the aircraft is in direct to mode and it's going to JSON. Not necessarily from KJYO, but it's going to JSON. Now on the right hand side, notice this field that says distance. So right now it's telling you to get to JSON, it's going to be 124 nautical miles. If I hit the cursor, the field display or distance is displayed and flashing. Now I can simply click on the clear button and have a different display. So what this tells me is the estimated time en route between points. I click clear again and now I have the uh, timing in central standard time. It will tell you how many hours or how many minutes it took you to get from KJYO to JSON, from JSON to CLAD, and so on and so forth. I hit clear one more time, and it shows you the desired track. So it says to go from JSON, from uh, Leesburg to JSON, you would need to use two, uh, track, num track 229, and so on and so forth. Notice that Going to Jason to CLAD, CLAD to KLKV is the same for the uh, uh, 004004 desired track, but that's not correct because my sample data does not have these entries. I had to put a position and it happened to be the same position. So this is not for navigation purposes, right? Your, your airplane, your GPS in your airplane will get you the right desired track. If I click on clear one more time, it cycles back to the first one which is distance. Once I'm done, I hit the cursor and now my flight plan is set to go. This concludes the chapter on flight plans. We will have other chapters that talks about navigation and other videos that talk about the relationship between flight plans and navigations and how you can respond to certain situations including communicating with a control tower so on so forth for directions to fly this heading or fly to this point or directly to that point and so on and so forth. 
Thank you for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, please let me know how we're doing. Thank you so much.